Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This is my last Easter project and I thought I'd do something nice for the house. So this is going to be my Easter wreath. So I like to do something like this every year. Um, I think I was, I done a rosette one last year. So some of you will know that I've recently received or got a Cricut machine. So uh, I was playing around and <laughs> in a bit crazy. And as you can see, cut lots and lots of flowers. So I've got all these beautiful little petals here, which I'm just kind of shaping. So I've just got a mat here, which I made actually from the packaging that I received my Tim Holtz stamping platform in. So it's just kind of a few layers of soft foam or plastic, and then it's got that black foam on top. And you can see there, I'm just using my the larger ball end of this stylus that I've got from paperbox.com and uh, yeah, just shaping them. So I also cut some leaves. You can see they've got the big, big ones to the far right and then those smaller kind of leaves as well. So then I went ahead and this is using the chipboard that I got from Every Crafts A Pound. This is four mil. And then this is some ribbon, which I shared in one of the what did I get to, uh, videos. And this was just some ribbon that I received in this kind of bargain pack. Um, it was just that kind of thing that I'm not really going to use, dare I say, on show. It's just not my kind of style, but it was perfect for wrapping around this chipboard. Now, of course, you could just maybe paint this, you know, add some gesso on it or something like that or wrap some paper around it. But I just wanted something quick and easy. So I'm just wrapping around this ribbon. So it's got that kind of um, shiny trim to the sides of it, but it was just the right amount to cover this whole piece. Now, the ring itself is just under 12 by 12. Okay, so again, if you do want to make something of a similar size, you want something that's about 12 by 12 and it's a two inch ring. Okay, so then the circle inside, you just want to obviously cut down a bit smaller. But don't worry if it's rough, you could see how, you know, mine was really kind of wrecked really. But once you wrap that ribbon around, it's, you would never know. So you don't need to worry too much. So now my ring is all prepared and I'm just using my cropper dial here just to punch two holes through so that I can hang my ribbon. So I've already got somewhere to hang this up because I have in the past made wreaths, got finished, you know, got to the end, finished it all. And then I've thought... <laughs> How am I going to hang it up? So I've, I've remembered this time to add my little kind of string or ribbon here first and then I can work around that. So it's, um yeah, just standard knot at the back, but you're not going to see any of that. But um, now I've got something nice to hang it on when it's all finished. So we are now ready to go. And basically all I'm doing is I've got my hot glue gun on and I'm just going to absolutely cover this ring with all of these lovely flowers which took no time at all. Now, of course, if you don't have the Cricut, you can die cut these, you can use pre-made cut flowers. It's still very easy to do with, you know, with whatever it is that you have. So you can see there what I'm doing now, the ones with the holes in the middle, they're all gonna be covered and you'll see that um, in a moment as well. But this was really, really quick to do. It didn't take, <laughs> because the beauty of the Cricut is you just program it in and it cuts it for you and you can carry on and do other things. So. This, yeah, this project was so much faster than it would have taken if I did have to die cut them all, but I still enjoyed doing that anyway. So yeah, if you want speed, then get yourself a cutting machine because I love mine now. So you can see there how great this is looking and how full it is. Now the greeny kind of colored flower looks a lot more, I guess, fluorescent and so do those leaves, but they're not that fluorescent in real life. So I guess the lighting on my camera um, is is just picking it up or well, the lighting from my lamp sorry and my camera is just picking it up slightly different now I'm adding in those big leaves so I try to I guess balance these out because they are quite big so I have kind of an equal amount going around in the center and then the same around the outer side as well now they, they did stand out quite a lot initially and I thought I want to try and blend them in but again through the course of this you will see once I add a lot more to it they do start to you know I think balance out and it they look really great so now I'm adding in those smaller little leaves and again just that nicer kind of green breaks up all the other colors and just adds a bit more well just color brightness it's just yeah that's that's me that's what I like and they're really it's just happy and bright and it's just nice to be using yeah all of these fresh colors now that we've got these nicer evenings and everything or days so now I went and cut the Happy Easter. Now this was a very thick 
uh, mirrored cardstock and initially I did cut it first but I didn't get my pressure right so I had to cut it again so what I'm going to do is I want to create some bunting so I'm cutting I'm well with this white piece now I'm just going to roughly work out and these are one and a quarter by two all of these little pieces now that I'm going to cut so these are one and a quarter inch strips and then they will be two inches this way I believe and once I've done one yeah two okay so I just go through and cut myself enough for every letter for the happy easter and then what I'm going to be doing is adding little flag tails onto the bottoms of them now again you could have a die for this that's you know fine I could have probably cut this on the Cricut but uh, this was just really easy to do anyway so you can see that I'm just cutting up right in the center by about half an inch and then join up from either side so up through the middle and then I was decided what to do oh do I do that one do I do that one and then I just went along and used that one as kind of a bit of a guide really for all of them so they were all exactly the same so just go through right up through the middle and then cut up each side and there you have a lovely little bit of bunting so it's really easy to do it doesn't take no time at all you can also do um what's the other way of doing the bunting I've lost my train of thought now anyway there's a few different variations that you can do but I was really pleased with that. I thought it looked nice. So now I'm just going along, just sticking them all down. So I've just got some of my Alina's tacky glue there. And um, again, that took no time. And there was, you know, there, it was, they weren't too small that the glue was kind of oozing out everywhere. So they, they did um, stick down nicely. And I definitely like that font and that size. So I'll be using that one a lot more as well. So that's all my bunting ready. Now I've got some Baker's Twines. So this is just a nice, nice pinky colour. And I'm just running some glue along the top of the back side there of each of those letters and just sticking it onto the ribbon. I've got about a quarter of an inch gap in between each one. And um, you could hole punch, I guess, and weave it through. I did think about doing that, but again, this is just for speed and it just looks as good anyway. So I wasn't too, too worried. It's not gonna be out for weeks and weeks and weeks like Christmas. So um, I was quite happy with how that looked. So now I'm gonna start adding this onto the wreath itself. I've got my lovely big yellow ribbon here for my bow. Now, a few of you have asked how I make my bows. I was horrendous, really, really bad. I used to say in loads of my earlier tutorials, I'm really bad, but I guess now I'm slowly getting better, but I will do a little tutorial I'm just showing you how I do them but I guess it's just down to just keep practicing but yeah I don't find them hard anymore so <laughs> I was all fingers and thumbs before but um, it does make a difference with the kind of ribbon you use I find as well if you've got a good quality especially even thicker I find that I can make you know really really nice um, bows with it so I was just trying to work out which angle I needed then to make my uh, kind of flag flag tails there so now I'm sticking that down. So I've just got my little silicon finger protector there because some of you have asked in the past what that is. It's just perfect when you're using hot glue because you can apply pressure and you don't obviously burn yourself. So I will share any links. They're by Stick2 brand, I believe it was. So that's the first one there stuck down. I'm just kind of holding it up just to make sure everything hangs nicely. I did have to kind of flatten some of the leaves underneath just so that obviously that happy did, did lie nicely flat. Um, or nice and flat should I say and then I'm just again bringing in the Easter and just sticking that just below but so now I'm just sticking that big bow right in the middle and I do end up cutting down the tails a little bit because they were just kind of hanging a bit too far down for my liking so I was just trimmed them up a little bit shorter so now I've got these they're just polystyrene glitter eggs they sell them in the pound shop they sell them pretty much every year um, so I've got the small ones and I've got some slightly larger ones as well. The larger ones are just going to be decorated on the Easter table, kind of scattered around really. But these ones I'm actually now going to stick in the centre of every single flower on that wreath. So rather than having like a little, um, well, centre of a flower, you know, just like a little circle die cut or, you know, something like that. Some um, like flat back pearls or some gemstones and things. I thought I'm going to add the Easter eggs. And it just really brought it together. It added some sparkle, it added more texture and dimension and obviously made it feel even more Eastery. So it was perfect. And I didn't even think about it bef before I cut all those flowers. So the colors that I cut the flowers, I personally don't think could have matched any better because it just works really, really well. I think I used every single color egg I've got the blue there. I guess the blue is the colour that maybe doesn't go as much, but the purple, the yellow, the green, the orange, 
the pink, the yellow, they all go, go perfectly. And there you have it. A really cute Easter wreath. So much colour, a little bit of shine from the silver letters, you know, that lovely big bow. Um, and I think personally that that's better than a lot of the ones that you see in the shops. So now you can see it against the white background and it really does pop. I think those green leaves all the way around really kind of frame it. Um, yeah, the style of the flowers, the colours, everything all came together really well. So this, I guess, is my first official Cricut um, project, but can be made just using normal die cuts, like I said, pre-die cuts and so on. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's inspired you. You could make these very small. You could make it as a table centerpiece, you know, so there's lots of ways to change this as well if you wanted to. And of course, it can be made for many other occasions as well. So that's the last of my Easter projects, as I said, and I will be back again on Friday with another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye. Mm -hmm.